can happen in seven days. It is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we know the whole world is kind of topsy-turvy right now. And certainly we're starting to experience that in our country. So, so we thought uh, today, well, I guess we should say we're streaming actually from our home. Behind yeah. us is the actual pilgrim statue, the Marian Devotional Movement pilgrim statue of Our Lady of the Cape. And of course we have St. Joseph seeing it as it's his feast day today. Happy feast day! Yay! <laughs> But we thought we'd start with, you know, we all have guardian angels. Oh, yes. And quite often we forget. I know I forget all the time. Oh, yeah, but my guardian angel. So, so I just thought to open the show today, why don't we do uh, the prayer to our guardian angel? Does that make sense? I think that sounds fantastic. And Excellent. yes, yeah, sometimes I forget too. My guardian angel, I'm so sorry. Please forgive <laughs> us when we forget you. We just love you and we need you. They're obviously here with us and, right. and your guardian angels are there with you. So yeah, so I have this indulgence prayer of the guardian angel, prayer to the guardian angel. And I've been teaching my uh, our grandson as well. So I do a little song with it. So uh, would you all like to join me? In the name of the Father, Father and of the Son, Son, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So angels sent by God to guide me, be my light and walk beside me, be my guardian and protect me, on the paths of life direct me. And my grandson, little Blaze, if you're watching, let's do it together. Angels sent by God to guide me, be my light and walk beside me, be my guardian and protect me, on the paths of life direct me. And then you would of life direct me and then he would clap his hands <laughs> in the name of the father, father and of the son and the holy, holy spirit. spirit amen now we know we're protected <laughs> right we've got our guardian Yay! angels here so there we go so we're uh quite excited about this show as we said last week we're gonna this show is gonna be about the miracle of the ice bridge and it is so so timely given everything that's been going on mm. and uh, one of the things we're gonna be featuring is the woman in orbit book here that uh, we produced and released I guess it was last year interestingly enough the story from yesterday flows right into today's story and today's story is Our Lady of the Cape. So isn't that neat? Sister Minetta decided <laughs> that she would pick, obviously today, to represent Our Lady of the Cape. And we'll tell you why in, in a little while as we get into the ice bridge. But before we do that, yesterday was Our Lady of Mercy or uh, of Savona. Yes. And I hadn't heard of this story before, but it's in Savona, Italy. And it was really interesting because when she when she came to Antonio by the brick, she said, go to Savona, Savona and renew my instructions with greater insistence, calling all to leave their sins and vices. Bid all to make three processions of penance because my son is greatly stirred in anger towards the world because of its iniquities. And I must say, when I read this yesterday, it just really kind of confirmed with what's been in my heart, even this whole last week, as we think mm -hmm. about what is taking place from uh, obviously the coronavirus part. But you just get a sense that, you know, the Lord maybe is had enough i mean yeah. we have kicked them out of schools oh. we've uh, we've had scandals i mean the list goes on and on and on media everything so you know all the ways that we have been really distracted from him and his presence yeah. you know mm -hmm. uh, not that there's anything bad with sporting events or this or that but we, i mean we get so obsessed as a society that we forget to be with our god we forget that he created us and uh, I think he's calling a lot of us just to deeper repentance and back to him. What's amazing about this story of Our Lady of Savona is as these, as he went back, it was amazing. He went to the streets and everybody in the streets was repeating the same words that Mother Mary had told him, which was, mercy and not justice my son mm. so here he goes he's, he's walking the streets and everybody is saying mercy not justice and really that's what our lady is all about she's she's our lady of mercy and this is a time of great mercy we'll be celebrating divine mercy sunday in the mm. not too distant future and now we have to really just repent and ask for God's mercy, ask for repentance and ask for just so many souls as, as graces are unleashed 
uh, upon this earth for souls to, to, to soften, hearts to soften in order for them to come back to God, in order for us to all go to God more fully. So this is an amazing story yesterday because it is an incredible preparation for the story of the miracle of the ice bridge and Our Lady of the Cape. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Angelina read through the story a little bit. As we go through paragraph through paragraph, all, uh, oh yeah, they tell you not to touch your face. Look at that. I've been doing that a couple of times here. <laughs> Some of you probably picked up on that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So in, in any event, let's, let's read through this and we're going to talk about the miracle of the ice bridge and uh, through the lens of maybe what's going on today and just so that we can see that you know history really repeats itself this this is of course in a much smaller way in terms of it was just one geographical parish but it is a lens into how we as the world can maybe get back on track so let, let's start with that sure so Father Luc Desolet was sent to the little town of Cap de la Madeleine on the St. Lawrence River in the province of Quebec. His new parish was rich in history, but poor in faith. His, his church, built in 1714, was a century and a half old, and it had replaced the original chapel built in 1659. By the middle of the 19th century, the people of the district had become extremely lax. Hmm. So there's our first clue. So by the time Father Luke came to Cap de la Madeleine, it was actually 1864. So Father Vachon was the resident priest in the 1700s when that chapel was built. And after he died, the faith really died with him. Mm -hmm. So when Father Luke came in actually 1864, he, he came to a parish that was dead. You know, basically that they, they had forgotten about the Lord. And uh, he, he said, what am I to do? And he really was struggling for three years until a seminal event took place. And I think that happens in this next paragraph. <laughs> On the vigil of the Feast of the Ascension in 1867, Father de Soleil went into his church and found, before the statue of the Virgin, a small pig with a rosary between its teeth. Mm. There, the priest said, Men drop their beads and the swine pick them up. And there's an exclamation mark on there. There you go. He knelt before the statue and promised to spend the rest of his life spreading devotion to the rosary. He established enrollment in the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary, originally erected at Cap de la Madeleine in 1694. Immediately afterward, there was a remarkable rebirth. So let's, of piety. let's stop there. So, yeah. so. Imagine this, right? He goes, he goes into that chapel and he finds a pig chewing on a rosary. And really about our world right now, I mean, it's like the world is chewing on a rosary because men have forgotten, women have forgotten, children have forgotten who created us, who is God. And the rosary was used in the new world it's it's called i love this term for it a bible on a string why do they call the rosary a bible on a string well when the missionaries came over to the new world in the 1600s this was a great way to explain the gospel because of course they would start with the our father and as they went through the creed people would learn oh god creator of heaven and earth oh so there's god we have we have a god who created heaven and earth and of course they go through it about jesus christ about mother mary about the life death resurrection so you learn the basic tenets of the christian faith and then of course to remind us of those things on an ongoing basis well it was all the mysteries and the mysteries reflected the life of christ so this was really the missionary's Bible on a string in order to share the faith. And it grew and grew and grew. So when Father Luc de Salat understood that, wow, look at this, the, the pigs, the pig has picked up this rosary, the men have forgotten, he, he realized, you know what? There was a rosary confraternity that was established at the Cape in 1694. And I'm going to reestablish enrollment in the Rosary Confraternity. Now I'm going to give you a website, rosarybridge.com. Here we are. Welcome back again. <laughs> Welcome back. There's probably tons of people streaming today. Anyways, we, we lost uh, the signal there, so sorry about that. 
hopefully uh, you'll know to join us again. And I got a little bit, uh, where where was I? So it was just talking about, yes, the rosary. We've forgotten this was a Bible on the string. Yes. And now, of course, Father Luke de Sillet has now reestablished enrollment in the confraternity. And let's listen to what's taken place now. Immediately afterward, there was a remarkable rebirth of piety among his people. In time, there was need for a larger church at the Cape. The men of the parish crossed the river, quarried and prepared the stones for the new edifice. The parish could not afford a barge to bring the stones across the river, and the river was so wide and swift at the point that it did not freeze every year. Beginning in November 1878, the parishioners recited the rosary every Sunday after high mass in petition for freezing weather. The beginning of March, they began. They became discouraged, but the pastor himself continued to pray. Hmm. On the evening of March 14th, a warm wind began breaking up the ice farther down the river. It came floating in huge chunks. Ice accumulated behind the cape. By March 16th, it formed a mass reaching almost from shore to shore. All that night, in the bitter cold, more than 60 men worked to reinforce the causeway. The work was dangerous because the current was swift and much of the ice was soft. Far into the morning, a dim light shone from one of the rectory windows. There is nothing to fear, the men said to each other. The curé is reciting his beads. His abbés are holding us up. From then on, the causeway of ice was called the Bridge of Rosaries. So here's what's so incredible about this story. You know, we think about all these people praying their rosary as well as Father Luc de Sillet. But let's remember, they were all enrolled in the Rosary Confraternity. Yes. And while we had our temporary interruption, you went and grabbed a Rosary Confraternity certificate. Yes. What is one of those benefits? This is what it looks like. Yeah, so read the, the specific benefit that I'm talking about that relates to the power in what they were looking to do here. Well, the first one that was mm. very, it's very exciting is the special protection of the Mother of right. God. You know, so having that mm. too when they're on there, the men on the ice and yeah. and what they were doing in the freezing cold weather and, and it went 24-7, didn't it? Yeah. Like the men yeah. were doing this night and yeah, day, every I think, day. Right? bringing yeah. uh, stones across. Well, actually, no, not just they had to they had to come back and fortify it. But then when it started, it was morning till night. I mean, that's yes. amazing. You imagine being a wife of a husband out there yeah. on the ice, you know, like oh. And um, this is incredible. A share in the prayer of countless thousands of members the world over, and this even after death. Like my. So that's that's it, right? The share in in all of the prayers. So in a, in other words, there back back in those days, there was was so many people enrolled in the Rosary Confraternity. So when they were praying, they weren't praying in isolation, uh, alone at the mir at uh, a Cap de la Madeleine. No, 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 no. Those prayers were combined with all the prayers of every confraternity member on the planet. So. All of that, though, that prayer goes up to Our Lady, and it just gave her so, so much leverage to, to make this miracle happen. And let's not forget, there's another one here. Mm -hmm. This is a huge one, number four, the intercession of the entire heavenly right. court. Right. A very similar promise, uh, the same kind of a promise, which is in one of the promises right. of the rosary, which we have 15 promises of. Yeah, no, that's awesome, my love. So uh, obviously, yes, and I hadn't thought about that. So not only being a, m a member of the Rosary Confraternity, do you get all the intentions. You're getting, of course, the whole heavenly court <laughs> praying with you. So, you know, they may have been discouraged praying Sunday after Sunday, as the accounts say, where, oh, wow, as if there's going to be a bridge of ice that's going to take place in March after, you know, that was the winter was pretty well getting over. So oh. it was amazing how this happened. But there there you have it. You know, you've got even the heavenly court praying. So it wasn't just the 100 or 200 people. It was this collaboration of prayer. And we're obviously pointing to, you know, what we need in our day. We need a collaboration of prayer. We cannot be in spiritual silos. You know, even though a lot of us are sequestered to our homes, really. 
But there is a way, a very special way to connect us and unite us in prayer. We're going to continue to go back on that. So, yeah. And I think it's amazing, too, that I don't know how much the people there in those days would have known about the other stories that have happened with Our Lady True. throughout the um, hundreds of years where she yes. appeared and made herself known and people cried out to her, whether it was wars or pestilence or yes. plagues, and, and they would process her or go to an image of her and um, plead with her, you know, and give them her give yeah. her their intentions. And we have a lot of those stories in the Woman of Orbit book. I mean, we have so much in our day and age within our Catholic faith to learn more and more about even what our brothers and sisters so went true. through before us and the things that happened how Our Lady would just come through and the people would be saved some way somehow and these stories in here are just remarkable yeah so I thought let's let's show the viewers a picture of, of the, the folks that actually went across that first trip so the one the one where you see him with his wife that was the one his name is Furman Kadat and he went first with an axe and then a Flavian Barassa, the one who's by himself, uh, he is the one that held a rope just in case um, Furman Kadat would fall through the ice so that he could pull him out. So as this whole miracle of the ice bridge was unfolding, that's, that's the kind of faith they had to have and courage. So it's amazing because, and we've heard Bishop Tromley talk about this, you know, he, he talked about the fact, yes, Our Lady gave a miracle of an ice bridge, but we still have to do our part. And you look at the courage and the bravery to go across, but they did with faith. And that's the kind of faith we need today. So let's read a little bit further now. What took place as a result of this miracle of the ice bridge? After High Mass on March 18th, the Vigil of St. Joseph, mm. the men began carrying the stones. For eight days, they brought them over the Bridge of Rosaries on their sledges. Pools swirled a few feet from the path across the ice, but there were no accidents. Praise God. Wow. And Mother Mary. On the eighth day, the weather turned warmer. The stones had been hauled. Father de Soleil ordered the work to stop. By the ninth day, the passage was swept away. The new church was built and the ancient chapel dedicated to the Queen of the Most Holy Rosary on June 22nd, so 1888. So hold off there. Yeah, in 1888. Sorry, <laughs> we'll, we'll read that again. Yeah. But I just wanted to back up a mm. little bit just to notice it was March 19th. <laughs> so that's today, of course, Yay! right? Many, many years Thank ago. So Father Luke had also made a petition to to and ask saint joseph that he if he would protect if he would also honor this ice bridge that they would do a special high mass and he is the patron of canada he's yes. the patron of the universal church yes we are we are uh, obviously celebrating his feast day today and he played a pivotal role i i heard uh, father mark goring just say something that i just thought was great recently about saint joseph uh, and Our Lady, because of course Our Lady, the Mediatrix of All Grace, the Immaculate Conception, but still, you know, Saint Joseph is who the angel came to to said, you know, I want to protect you and bring your family to Egypt. <laughs> and it's not as if uh, when when uh, when Saint Joseph went to Our Lady, she said, Hey, I'm the Immaculate Conception. You know, I just had a baby. I'm just going to hang out here for a while. No, no, no. No, she she went <laughs> right she packed up and she went she knew she knew god has an order for things and fathers you know saint joseph is an amazing example yeah. for us you know yeah. to take that protective nature over our families mm -hmm. and we need to do that more than ever so it's no small wonder that the lord before he granted because let's make no mistake yes mother mary's the intercessor and saint joseph is the protector but it is of course our lord who grants these miracles through their intercession and i would say to you that it was vitally important to the lord that the whole holy family was involved in this miracle of the ice bridge it was important that father jo or that uh, saint joseph had a role to play and as a result, they indeed, indeed did do that high mass for St. Joseph on March 19th, and then they began to work. And they were protected all the way through. It was amazing. Until now, what, what did, uh, and now, well, actually, let me just fill in a couple mm -hmm. things. Yeah. After the miracle of the ice bridge, it's 21 years 
until we get to 19, or 1888 for the shrine uh, being dedicated to Our Lady of the Rosary. So in this 21 years, you've got Father Duguay and Father Dissela uh, there. They're continuing to enroll people in the confraternity. And it just grew and grew and grew. Many, many pilgrimages came. The official ones came in the early 1800s, or sorry, 1880s. And then by the time we get to 1888, it's very well established. There's many favors that are happening because of the blessed roses. Oh, yeah, we like that. We talk about that on, on uh, different shows of ours, too, doing the blessed right. roses. Uh, blessed roses, that's amazing. Yeah, so what would they do, though? They would uh, they would pray the prayer. I don't think we have the prayer yes, here, but yeah. uh, the blessed roses. So in other words, they blessed roses on the confraternity altar, and then they would hand them out and ask for Our Lady's intercession, and many favors were received. Yeah. So when we get to June 22nd, 1888, this is very interesting because Father Luc de Sela had petitioned to actually move the statue, an identical statue to this one behind us, the miraculous statue of Our Lady of the Cape, from the side altar to the main altar, uh, above the actual altar, and also the translation of the Rosary Confraternity altar to the main altar as well. So when you go to the shrine at Cap de la Madeleine, the Rosary Confraternity altar is that main altar, and Our Lady is there. And who better than St. Joseph would replace Our Lady at the side? So that's what they ended up doing. When you go to the Cape, you'll see on the side transept, there's a beautiful, beautiful uh, statue of St. Joseph holding baby Jesus. So we'll continue on. Yes. Following the dedication, in the evening, Father de Soleil, Blessed Father uh, Frederick Jensen, and Pierre Lacroix went to pray in the church, where that day the statue of Our Lady of the Cape had been moved from the side to the main altar, like you just explained now. Mm. Now the confraternity, now the, the rosary confraternity altar, as they knelt, the priest saw the downcast eyes of the statue open wide and look westward towards three rivers and the rest of North America! Exclamation mark. That's a big deal! It is. It's, it's amazing. And again, as Bishop Cromley has said, you know, she didn't have to say anything. Mm. Really, just she is the messenger. Just her looking out, casting her eyes beyond and when you look at the statue behind us of course yeah. her eyes are cast down mm. uh, to those who are in prayer she's bowed down and we should mention that our lady of the cape well when she was donated in 1854 she wasn't donated as our lady of the cape she was donated as our lady of the immaculate conception because yeah. she's fashioned after the medal of the immaculate conception which uh, comes from saint catherine Labore's. Uh, apparitions in Rue de Bac in France in 1830. And of course, the miraculous medal is now what we call that medal of the Immaculate Conception. It's called the miraculous medal because it, as, as people would wear it, and many of you, if you're if you're not wearing one, I've got one around my neck, but this is this is a big one right here, and it's got our, our lady on it, and it's you know very, very plain to see that she is. Our Lady of Grace, Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. And so many people have been healed through pestilence, plagues, and all of these things through the miraculous metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were speaking on the, uh, was it the last show or the show before about also having a St. Benedict's medal as well? That's right. Very and again, getting one of those and getting them blessed. Amen. So, um, yeah, this was just an amazing thing that happened there. Do I carry on? Yes, might as well carry on. So Father de Soleil died a couple of months later. Mm -hmm. His work was accomplished. And that's what we would all desire too, is that our mission that the Lord and Our Lady have for us would be accomplished before we draw our last breath. Yes. The miraculous statue called Our Lady of the Cape was crowned in 1904 by authority of Pope Pius X. Mm. In 1909, the bishops of Canada proclaimed the chapel to be a national shrine to the Blessed Virgin. In 1947, the pilgrim statue of Our Lady of the Cape, an exact replica of the miraculous statue, was processed to the historic Marian Congress held in the nation's capital. Nation's capital. Nation's capital. Yeah. In 1954, the miraculous statue was canonically crowned a second time on the authorization of Venerable Pope Pius XII. 
Many souls continued to enroll in the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary at Capital Madeleine. Yes. So now we're getting to the crux of the matter as it relates to our our day. And you know, obviously what is taking place in our world. So we as a world have turned away from the Lord in so, so, so many ways. Not unlike what was happening at Cap de la Madeleine in 1867 when Father Luke discovered that pig chewing on the rosary. And Our Lady comes again, begging, begging the Lord for mercy, not justice. But she just doesn't, you know, leave us empty handed. She has given us an amazing way to connect in prayer, even if we are isolated in our homes, my brothers and sisters. You realize that as we enroll in the Rosary Confraternity, the Confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary, every time we pray a Rosary, we are connected together. This is this is canonically and ecclesially. Uh, uh, put in place by the popes over many, many centuries, because it was established over 500 years ago through the Dominicans. And even, you know, you go back to the famous Battle of Lepanto in 1571, it was the Rosary Confraternity that Pope Pius V turned to in Rome, and they end up winning the battle. So we have a big battle. So we don't have to be doing it all alone. We are not alone. But what we would really encourage you to do is enroll in the Rosary Confraternity. Uh, join with, we're in well over 500 cities all over the world right now. Every single continent is represented. Just go to rosarybridge.com and enroll so that we can you know, just be joining in prayer. And, and it's not just, your, your, it's every rosary that you'll pray for the rest of your life. You know, it's connected, which is amazing. And we do, and all that's required is three mysteries a week. So sure. back then they had the glorious, the sorrowful, and the joyful. Of course, we love it and everybody to pray the rosary every day. Mm -hmm. But this requires at least three mysteries a week. And even that's not under pain of sin. That's you right. can also enroll with us online or also by the, if you want to phone us as well, maybe you don't have access to a computer. Our number is 1-888-501-1083. 1-888-501-1083 and we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, so think about it. Today, Pope Francis is asking the world to pray the rosary and we're going to be live streaming it on a Facebook group called Devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You can join that group and we'll, in between this show, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, excuse me, drop this will uh, accept you as a member. There's over 800,000 people. So we're going to be live streaming the rosary at four o'clock today. Um, but think about it. That's like we're all going to pray the rosary once and then we kind of all go our separate ways and we may be praying the rosary again. But it's so much more powerful if all are enrolled in the rosary confraternity because then every time we're praying the rosary, it's just like Pope Francis saying, let's all pray the rosary at nine o'clock today, his time. So it, it, it creates that kind of situation every rosary you pray. So it isn't just once, it's not a once and done thing, a one and done thing, it's ongoing. So yes, we're beating the drum because if there ever was a time that we connect together and pray the rosary together, now is the time. Absolutely. I think about my mom. She was in World War, World War II yes. in Amsterdam, and she was a young girl, and there was bombs dropping around them. Right. And there was, my, like my grandmother, my Oma, she had the suitcase ready at the door, or suitcases ready mm. in case they would have to flee. And, and uh, here we are, like in our time, you know, and we've got yes. something similar going on here. And it's, uh, you know, it's worldwide. Like, it's just really quite something, this epidemic. It's it but, is but pandemic. also or pandemic and also in the midst of all of this too so i got an email and uh found out that um from a dear uh friend there in uh toronto um mrs Pereira, and she told me uh she sent over information about there's a saint corona and some of you may already know yeah, about this right. but i didn't know about this look it up saint corona and she is the patron saint for i think it's epidemics, epidemics and okay. um so we've got well, to call counts. upon her as well saint sure. corona 
And we also uh, have, we also want to pray with you today be, with uh, St. Teresa of Avila's relic because yes, that's a her, great prayer. her um, great prayer that a lot of you will be familiar with is really a great one to pray for all of us today. So we don't want to miss out on that either. And then we'll also be doing a prayer of consecration to St. Joseph because we're always also blessed mm -hmm. with a relic of St. Alphonsus Liguori who wrote this consecration prayer to St. Joseph. So we are going to be able to ask for his intercession while doing that. And we're also going to end with an act of consecration to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal because, oh, of excellent. course, she's very, very much about, I mean, it was the cholera outbreak took place in the mid-1800s, and what I was reading, I mean, the mortality rate of that was 50%. It was much, much higher than what we're experiencing now. So all these rosaries also, uh, you know, bring graces and, and just get people operating from this place of love so they reach out to the vulnerable and... You know, just we, we need a lot of love for sure right now. So and let's uh, go ahead. Sarah. Yeah, also uh, we got the news that uh, uh, from Medjugorje coming in to pray three Our Fathers at the 3 o'clock hour. At the 3 o'clock so hour. hour. That's mercy. Eastern Standard Time. So 3 o'clock the hour. Not to be confused with us streaming at 4. We'll be doing the Luminous Mysteries at 4 is what I guess we've been told to do. So we okay. will be doing that on that web page. Excellent. So now let's move into our closing prayers and then hopefully I'll be able to connect these videos and, and upload them as one video. <laughs> <laughs> so ahead. let's begin with St. Teresa of Avila. So mm -hmm. if you want to hold her relic, my love, yes. she's one of the relics inside of here. We're going to ask for her powerful intercession at this time for all of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, St. Teresa of Avila, we ask for your most powerful intercession. Please pray for everyone throughout the world for the graces to let nothing disturb you, nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is wanting to him who possesses God. God alone suffices. St. Teresa of Avila, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the name of the Father, Father and of the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Then we're going to move on to St. Joseph, a consecration prayer that was written by St. Alphonsus Liguori. And now you can hold up his relic, my love. One yes. of the relics in here is St. Alphonsus Liguori. We certainly ask for the intercession of all the angels and saints too, and the whole celestial court, very exciting, and our guardian angel that we spoke about earlier. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Son and, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So St. Alphonsus Liguori, please pray for us and with us. O Holy Patriarch, we rejoice with you at the exalted dignity by which you were deemed worthy to act as Father to Jesus to give him orders, and to be obeyed by him whom heaven and earth obey. O oh, great saint, as you served by God, we too wish to be taken into your service. We choose you after Mary to be our chief advocate and protector. We promise to honor you every day by some special act of devotion and by placing ourselves under your daily protection. By that sweet company, which Jesus and Mary gave you in your lifetime, protect us all through life so that we may never separate ourselves from our God by losing his grace. Our dear St. Joseph, pray to Jesus for us. Certainly, he can never refuse you anything as, you obeyed all his, as he obeyed all your orders while on earth. Tell him to detach us from all creatures and from ourselves, to inflame us with his holy love, and then to do it with us, with us what he pleases. By that assistance, which Jesus and Mary gave you at death, we beg you to protect us in a special way at the hour of our death, so that dying, assisted by you, in the company of Jesus and Mary, we may go to thank you in paradise, and in your company to praise our God for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Saint Alphonsus Liguori, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I do have one other one that we want to do uh, to Saint Joseph because this particular one is an indulgence prayer. And it's great to 
um, having done our consecrations to Jesus through Mary, that we can give our most holy Mother Mary indulgence prayers also for her to be able to use. So let's do this in particular indulgence prayer. It comes from the book, The Handbook of Indulgences, Norms and Grants. I'll just show it to you because this is a, a great book to have in your library also. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed Joseph, husband of Mary, be with us this day. You protected and cherished the Virgin, loving the child Jesus as your son. You rescued him from danger of death. Defend the church, the household of God, purchased by the blood of Christ. Guardian of the Holy Family, be with us in our trials. May your prayers obtain for us the strength to flee from error and wrestle with the powers of corruption, so that in life we may grow in holiness and in death rejoice in the crown of victory. Amen. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'll end with the act of consecration to our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. In the name of the, the Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Virgin Mother of God, Mary Immaculate, we dedicate and consecrate ourselves to you under the title of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. May this medal, maybe I'll have you hold the medal. <laughs> May this medal be for each one of us a sure sign of your affection for us and a constant reminder of our duties toward you. Ever while wearing it, may we be blessed by your loving protection and preserved in the grace of your Son. O most powerful Virgin, Mother of our Savior, keep us close to you every moment of our lives. Obtain for us, your children, the grace of a happy death, so that in union with you we may enjoy the happiness of heaven forever. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, sin pray, pray for, for us who have recourse to thee. thee. O, o Mary, Mary, conceived without sin, pray, pray for, for us who have recourse to thee. thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you please uh, either sing or say the consecration to Our Lady of the Cape, since this is her particular feast day that Saint, uh, or, or sorry, that Sister Manetta, who wrote the book, oh, the Woman right. of Orbit, wanted to. Um, she chose this particular day for the feast of Our Lady of the Cape. She did, didn't she? So, okay, get my guitar. And oh my goodness, good. great! We're there gonna we hear go. him play. Woo! Okay, that's right. Oh wait, we'll do that. So as uh, Angelina is grabbing my guitar, so just a reminder: go to rosarybridge.com and please enroll in the Rosary Confraternity. Have a choice of English, French, and Spanish. So here we go. So we're going to now. This, this prayer is from actually um, the consecration card, this one right here. We do have lots yeah. of those if any of you would like one. Right. <laughs> There's a consecration prayer on there. Our Lady of the Cape, Queen of the Holy Rosary, we offer and give and pray your sacrifices Good works, time, talent, and treasure To your immaculate heart To do with as you please For the greater glory of God I thank God the Father For choosing you to be my heavenly mother I thank God the Son For giving me to you as he was dying For my sins and those of the whole world on the cross I thank God the Holy Spirit for the graces he gives me through you help me by your prayers to be faithful to the vows of my baptism help me by your prayers to accomplish all that God has planned for me in advance to do Amen Amen, amen, amen. Our Lady of the Cape. Pray for 
pray for us in the Father's Son, Holy Spirit. All right, we'll see you next week. God bless you. Stay safe. Bye for now. Bye.